Hey, I'm Zach Arias, and I'm the guest blogger today at scottkelby.com, and I'm going to talk to you today about Photoshop techniques and post-production, and I'm going to talk to you about off-camera lighting. I'm going to tell you how to start a workshop. I'm going to talk to you today about location scouting, picking out a background for a portrait. Thank you guys for the opportunity to be here. I'll talk to you about studio build-out. I'm going to talk about workflow and getting paid. I'm going to talk to you today about how to use a computer. I'm going to talk to you about light and shadows and the transcendental qualities of each one. Post-production and Photoshop techniques. I'm going to talk today about red chairs. I'm going to talk about uh, women's clothing. They're going to make you a successful photographer, Photoshop and post-production. I, I went to Ikea. I bought sticks at Ikea, $150 worth of sticks at Ikea. I'm going to tell you how I did it. Today we're talking about big huge prints and how to make them. Hi, I'm Zach Arias. I'm going 100 miles an hour down a dead end road. Who am I as a photographer? What is my voice? I don't even know what that really means, but it keeps me up at night. What is my vision? What is my goal? What do I bring to the table that countless others have not already served up on this massive platter of visual pollution we create each and every day? Who am I? What is my goal? Every winter I get in a funk. A deep and abiding darkness seems to wash over my brain. I hate my photography. I'm convinced I'm a hack. I'm convinced that the work I create is trite and unacceptable. Every winter it is time to lash out and thrash about and recreate myself as an artist. Every winter I lock myself away in my studio and drag subject after subject through different lighting scenarios, wardrobe changes, sub-freezing locations. I borrow large format cameras. I rent different lenses. I create a thousand layers of garbage on top of a photograph. If I throw enough against the wall, something has to stick. Every winter I create a brand new body of crap. Stuff I'll never show the world. By January, I'm exhausted and depressed because I've yet to redefine myself as an artist. Jobs start coming back in. I'm busy again shooting what I know. By spring, I'm happy again because I pay all my bills with a camera. Summer comes along and I'm so busy I don't even know what my name is. I can barely keep up with the travel and the workload. Success settles in and I'm content with who I am. I lose my hunger. That fire in my gut is out, and I'm too busy to worry about it. But winter always comes. This winter was exceptionally dark. Why on God's great green earth do we have this insatiable desire to compare ourselves with others? What is this great sickness? I placed myself against my peers this year and was ready to walk away from the camera for good. I have so far to go, and I'm tired. It was time to reinvent myself again, but I didn't have it in me to even try. I settled into my depression and let it sweep over me like a gentle, suffocating blanket of cynicism and apathy. I've been driving as fast as I can for as long as I can remember. I've been stuck at this breakneck speed and it seems as though I can't get out of first gear. By the end of last year I was throwing rods and the gaskets were blowing out like birthday candles. It's been a sweet disgust that we 
drink from Raise a toast as it all falls apart Got your stones at a throne Lay your head here for a while As my friend Kevin Abeta says, we aren't curing cancer with a camera. That needs to sink in. The only job that cures cancer is the job that cures cancer, as my friend Luis says. The rest of us are just paying rent. At the end of the day, it isn't this camera that matters. My father, he gave me my first camera. He was quite the enthusiast. My father has now been lying in a hospital bed for nearly two months. They put the trach in to help him breathe. Now he can't talk. If he doesn't pull out of this, he won't speak again. He's had his 78 years to say what needs to be said. I pray his voice comes back. I have a lot I need to say to him, and I need to know he hears me. Chances are you have your voice. You can say whatever you want to say right now. So what are you saying? What are you doing with the time you have right now? When you're pushing 80 and you're flat on your back with no way to speak a single word, what will be going through your mind? Shutter speeds? Cool locations? That portrait series you shot that was printed in some magazine that no one remembers the name of? So why is all that so damn important now? I can pay my rent with a camera, or I can punch a time card and collect a check every two weeks. I can have the ability to make it to afternoon school functions for my boys, or I can just make the weekend events. I can hang out in a coffee shop with my wife at 10 a.m., or I can be watching the clock waiting for my 30-minute lunch break. I have an amazing life. I'm so very grateful for what I have, and any belly aching I do about it should have me taken to the woodshed for a lashing. So I'm still working on my photography. Am I so arrogant to think that I'll have it all figured out at 36 years old? I won't have it figured out at 56. But I'm on my way. And so are you. Some of you are the real top 10 photographers in the world, and the rest of us don't even know you're alive. You don't even realize how amazing you are. Some of you are just getting started. Be patient. Don't rush. Chill out. You are on your way. Some of you suck and you really need some help. Your camera doesn't have a Richard Avedon button on it, does it? Well, Avedon sucked. Karsh sucked. Adam sucked. Mary Ellen sucked. Cowart sucked. Jarvis sucked. Every photographer in all of history was a horrible photographer for some period of time. They learned. They grew. They had dark days. They persevered. That is the way of the artist. Just be patient. Keep on going. Transformation takes time. And from what I've seen in my life, it really is worth the wait. Tell